have found nothing, so I'll, I'll make a motion to accept both minute meetings as presented. All right, we have a motion to present, accept as presented. Do we have a second? We have a second. Yes. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Next on the agenda, projects of minimal impact report. Michelle. Uh, we have none this evening. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, public comments by visitors. If any visitors at this time would like to come up and make comment, please do so now. <laughs> Seeing there are none, we will move on to old business. Any old business that may be come before the commission tonight? I do not believe we have any. So we will move on to new business. First on the agenda, Jonathan Hill is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install areas of refuge outside the third floor attic windows on a property located at 14 Fayette Street in the residential multifamily historic district overlay. Michelle. Yes, thank you. The applicant is seeking to construct two areas of refuge outside of the third floor bedroom windows. These are proposed to be constructed, constructed of pressure treated framing, composite decking, with railings and balusters. And that's it. Thank you. And if you'd like to come up as part of the applicant. Sure. I'm and Jonathan Hill. Perfect. All right. Did you want to speak any more about the project or you just want us to ask questions? Um, well, it was, uh, the, the, the project was started, um, uh, was um, seeded by the uh, Summersworth Housing Authority when they were doing an inspection that they thought that the um, a place of refuge would make it safer for a secondary of egress. And so I followed it up with an inspection from uh, the uh, Summersworth Fire Department. And then they said that any um, window that exceeds 22 feet from grade would not be um, able to be reached by the truck that is the first responder. And so in that occasion that the places of refuge are where occupants can um, wait for the ladder truck that has the long enough ladders to be able to reach that area for a safe escape. And that is uh, the reason for my application. All right, thank you. Do we have any questions for the applicant tonight? Tim? A um, <clears throat> couple of things. One's, one is a statement. Uh, in order for anything higher than 20 feet off grade and it becomes a sleeping room, uh, that balcony is a re is one of a, a method of escape, and it's usually the most desirable versus an exterior staircase or putting in an interior exit. So that's usually the choice. There's a number of these around the city. Um, a few are already in the historic district. There's, um, and there's a few in the, yeah, there is a few in the historic district already. This home has already lost the vast majority of its um, um, what was that word I'm looking for? The uh, integrity, thank you. Uh, due to the modifications over the years, window changes and corner boards lost, and trim being covered and vinyl siding applied, I think the ship has sailed to preserve this house more, in my opinion. And also with the consideration that this bedroom space on these attic areas um, would require a second form of escape. Um, the thing that I did notice in his application that you considered to have the platform to be three foot by three foot, um, be advised that the entire clear space needs to be three foot by three foot. So posts for railings can't impede on that 36 inches. So you may need to make it three foot six by three foot six okay. to, to accommodate the spacing of those columns or you found a different attachment method. But anyway, the clear opening is 36 inches square. Okay. Um, it's always recommended that when they do get installed, they get installed, and this is a recommendation, I'm not sure why it's not included in the code, that they get put in at least 24 inches below the bottom of the windowsill if doable on offering an opportunity for someone not only to get out of the window, then lay down and let smoke or fire roll over the top of them versus having it flush with the bottom of the window and stand there and eat it anyway. So that very question I laid to the um, 
chief captain, I'm not sure the correct term, of the Summersworth Fire Department. He actually had to do, he says, Jonathan, I'm not sure what that is. He, he actually had, took a day to get back to me on He couldn't find it in the code. So it's not in the code? It's not. No. So he recommended with the people that he discussed when he finally got back to me before I made this application uh, that it be 18 inches below for exactly the reason that you right. mentioned. You want it to be able to lay down and Duck stay out of the way. Right. The whole I've point. always recommended 24. Okay. The code is silent on it. You could be zero, which is crazy. Yeah, right. Um, the other thing is that you also recommended using angle braces back to the structure. You would need also to provide proof that the structure can support that extra weight. Obviously, you're not going to mount it in between two stud bays and have it just sit on some board sheathing, which then it wouldn't support that weight. But <clears throat> the angling, the bracketing, this product, um, I would ins be in support of this. It also aids in a safety feature. Uh, you're not having fire responding personnel trying to rush into a burning building to get to that balcony where they have a way into that third floor. That's advantageous. The integrity is pretty much lost in this home. Um, it, as long as it, for me, that it would be required to be painted to a color of the applicant's choosing, uh, I'd be in support of this. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Richard, did I see you have one? No, but I, I will certainly agree with everything Tim said. I mean, I know we've had a couple of these before us as well, and they certainly are a safety feature. And, you know, again, this house has, you know, it is considered a poor integrity because it's just had so many changes, even to the shape of the structure itself. So it's, you know, certainly not one that we need to be overly critical with. But, you know, safety, of course, is important. So I certainly don't have any opposition to this. All right. Any other comments, questions? Actually, my question to George, I think it's across the street from your house, is that short little road that connects the two roads. What's the name of it? Pemberton. Huh? Pemberton, I Pem believe. Yeah, so there's that big Pemberton. white building on Pembroke. Um, oh, you're thinking of my house not over Fayette Street. Yes, your okay. house. Yes, Pemberton. There's that big white house that's on that street a number of years, about five years ago, maybe six years ago. Same exact situation, and one's on that building. So. Yeah. All right. Any other comments, questions? Do we have any motions? Make Richard? a motion to accept. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept this as presented with the painting of the materials within a reasonable time. I think we usually do a year on that. So that would be a condition. So you want a condition of painting within, I think we usually give six months. Six, six months, months to a year, yeah. I would only ask if I can use a uh, stain or heavy stain, uh, paint I, I like to avoid because paint, I don't paint outside anymore because the first thing that happens after a season is it peels and then I get tagged for peeling paint. Yeah, some sort of preservative coating other than the raw, that's PT. all we're asking. Okay, just didn't, I, yep. not to pick on words, but sometimes words matter. Nope. It does matter, yeah. it really does, When especially if we put paint and then you do stain, then it makes it harder yeah. for the city. So. Good for clarifying. I'll just go for um, a, 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 a colored or tinted stain. Yeah. Usually I use something cedar colored or something is nice. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion with the condition that it be paint or stained within six months of completion. Uh, do we have a second? Do we have a second? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion passes with that one condition. Okay, super, yes, that's no problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, Ethan P. Clark is seeking a Certificate of Appropriateness to replace a door and renew Certificate of Appropriateness 35-2022 for replacement of siding, trim, and windows for a property located at 37 Lincoln Street. Michelle. Yes, thank you. The applicant is uh, requesting to renew a previously approved Certificate of Appropriateness for replacement of siding and trim and window replacement. Uh, the application was approved on December 15, 2022. 22 uh, with the following conditions there shall be no J channel on installation in addition the applicant is also seeking to replace a side door of the front porch all right thank you do we have anybody to speak about this and please just state your name for the record my name is Ethan Clark would you like to add anything besides what we've heard or just have us ask questions um, you can ask questions it's fine. all right I will open up does the board have any questions or comments 
and we'll go through them. Um, so this this really is a question back to Michelle. This is an adding for asking for a renewal of a previously approved. Yeah. And with the exception of the door. Correct. So this is because these now expire where prior they did not. Correct. Um, I'll support this. We've already hashed this out with the siding, the trim, the J. As long as it all matches what, what was proposed and the door that he's proposing looks is fine. Um, I'm okay with it. All right. George? I just want is the door inside the porch? Uh, it is on the exterior. Okay. And you'll notice in the print that was given, um, there was a design on the door, so we have matched that design. Okay. Um, the door is just beyond the point where it can be repaired. We have attempted to repair it, and also the um, uh, the brackets are also rotted to the point where it can't be replaced. So um, we um, duplicated the uh, design so that way it matches up um, and should match the rest of the home. Awesome. Thank you. Richard? Yes. I certainly remember. I think I think this might have been two meetings discussion on this past one. Oh, because yes. It, yes. There's yes, a yes. lot of detail to this house, and yes. it certainly sounds like you're going to keep all that detail and yes. duplicate as best as possible. As so, best as possible, yes. Um, you know, we, we've had some siding jobs that have gone bad, one right down the road from you, just on the other oh, side yeah. of Maple, and then we've had one out on the corner of Noble and Maple that came out great. So, you know, I... I I'm hoping that yours is going to turn out more like the one on corner and Maple, Noble and Maple, and from the sounds of it, that's what you're aiming for. So correct, and um, I'm basically. certainly in favor of it, and look forward to seeing that done. Yeah, me too. All right. Any other comments, questions, concerns? I'll make a motion to accept as presented. I have a quick question to Michelle on this. When we say. Um, when it is said, I'm uh, looking to renew previous approval 35 2022, does that in turn say all of those approved with conditions? Those are still as part of this, correct? Correct. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. <laughs> and if for any reason this should go out another year, do I have to then come back, or is that something that we could possibly handle now while I have the board? So I will say. I know it was requested to approve this as minimal. The only reason I did not feel comfortable with that was because there was a door correction to it. Um, so I don't know how the board feels about these. I don't think I'd have a problem with that. I mean, obviously, if he had come back and not looking to make any changes, I don't see why that wouldn't have been. And my only reason for the request is because of the previously stated requirements, I am like not using J channel or any of that type of stuff. The labor, the materials, things like that have been a little bit more difficult. Um, and I do want to keep with the integrity of the home. Uh, but part of that does come with the availability of certain things. Uh, I didn't expect for it to go an entire year, but here we are and we're right. back. So here's my take. I, I was going to say, I have a question. Can we extend it and say we give this particular applicant two years without it expiring on him? Is yeah, that offer even within opinion our... before the answer? Yes. So, um, in my opinion, if this did not have the door component, would you have just approved it as minimal considering it would have been an already pre-approved application? Yes. So, wouldn't that process just be repeated if he doesn't need does need more time and there are no changes, he just needs time, reapplies under minimal and you just approve it administratively? I Yes, as long as there was no changes, I would have no problem approving as minimal. Then I would encourage then that process happen. All right. Just for my own knowledge, if anything were to change as far as her being the one that approves it. It's the chair, not necessarily her. Understood. Correct. Okay. <laughs> I, and that's, I just, I just want to know what my process is mm -hmm. as far as. So what we're just discussing is that if your time frame is, in, is stretched out beyond the year that you first saw, and you needed additional time because these would expire. You'd apply under same like just like you did this time. Only this time, the next time you wouldn't have any changes. The chair would review it and more and approve it as minimal impact, and you wouldn't have to come back here as, to the board. Understood. All right. 
any further discussion needed on that? Or we have a motion as present. Uh, we are looking for a second. Second? All right. All those in favor as it is stated? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes as stated. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda. Be here, Amy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, next on the agenda, certified uh, local government overview with historic res historical resource staff. Uh, Brandy Laughlin, uh, Preservation Planning and Development Coordinator. Uh, I believe we have you. I don't know if you want to come up and. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Brandi Laughlin. I'm the Preservation Development uh, Planning and Development Coordinator at the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so uh, thank you everybody for having me here tonight. I want to recognize my colleague Amy Dixon. Uh, she's also here with me. Um, one of my jobs with the Division of Historical Resources is to oversee the Certified Local Government Program and Amy does that with me. Uh, Amy does a lot of the numbers management behind the grants program um, and kind of compliance with uh, regulations. And I mostly work with communities who are certified local governments. Who gets the annual reports? I do. <laughs> and we've communicated many times over the years. Excellent. <laughs> well, um, I'm glad to hear that. It's really nice to put a face to the emails, and that's part of the reason that I'm here tonight. Um, one uh, step in the process of being a certified local government is that annual report. And another one is a quadrennial evaluation. And so every four years we try to touch base in person or you know, kind of more than just through email anyway um, with our communities to see how things are going and talk about the program. And there's a lot of turnover often, sometimes in staff, sometimes in board members. So it's just an opportunity to talk about the program, make sure you guys are aware and make sure I'm aware of what's going on with you all. So if you don't mind, I just want to open up my laptop real quick because I've got some. <laughs> no, um, I just, sorry. I just have some notes uh, as far as like what I want to make sure we touch on. Just a reminder that there are tens of thousands of viewers on television watching it. Excellent. <laughs> it's just a rough estimate. Yeah. You know, um, it's funny, in a previous life, I was actually the assistant planner in Laconia, so I feel like I should uh, be a little more comfortable up here, but um, it's been a few Shanna? years. I did, oh. yep, yep, yep. I worked with Shanna for, uh, I think it was three years I was there. She hired me, and then she left me, and <laughs> yep, so I know Shanna very well. Um, so I guess the first thing... Um, I want to ask you all is how familiar are you with the Certified Local Government Program and your responsibilities under it as well as the advantages that are available to you? Uh, most of the members of this board are have been here for a couple of years so they've gone through this but I would say Adam is our newest member so if you have any questions please feel free. Um, I don't have any questions right now I'm just going to kind of listen and observe and if I think of anything I'll let you know. Okay. So um, I'll just start with a quick overview. I'm assuming you guys know this, but just so we're all on the same page. Um, the Certified Local Government Program um, is really about the entire community, even though our um, point of contact is usually a staff person or the Historic District Commission or Heritage Commission in the community. Um, but it's really a commitment from the whole community to, um, to hold preservation values within that community. Um, I think as far as most of the questions I have tonight, I was hoping we could have a bit of a discussion, um, but if you guys are all good, then that's fine too. <laughs> um, so basic questions like how often do you meet? Monthly. Excellent. Um, about how many applications do you receive on average? Uh, I think we're usually about one to two a month. Pretty hardy. Yeah. Uh, sometimes more, obviously. <laughs> What's the most common type of application you receive? Siding, I would say, is a big one. Um, window replacement is another big one. So. 
So mostly um, repairs or changes to existing buildings. Yes. Okay. We've had a few, uh, one very significant new construction application that went through and other single families from, it's not many vacant lots. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, so most recently a was a larger, a larger development. Mm -hmm. I think I can sum up. It was, it was quite publicized. Mm -hmm. Uh, but out of that, just for informational purposes, uh, it is on our next uh, agenda item that our mayor is putting together a task force to look um, at, I'm sorry, that's actually not the next one, but close in mind, um, to look at how we handle infill projects. So okay. if there are demolitions and that things happen within the HCC, so we have better guidance from the city perspective of what the HCC would need as an infill project. Okay. Hopefully it's a collaborative effort between certain representatives of council and representatives of this board to work together on try to create that issue or solve that issue. So based on your existing ordinances, do you think it's possible that an outcome of that task force could be that you need a little bit more guidance within them as far as infill development review? We do have it as part of our guidelines, but oh, Michelle, do you? Yeah, so I think we've talked about this, Brandy. It would be uh, an infill uh, design guideline mm -hmm. like a separate section okay i think and the board we've talked about it at the board level yeah. Okay. yeah and on that same thought um several years ago the town actually implemented form-based codes mm, all, of, all of which happen to be within the historic district so something that i've stipulated or encouraged and I, I don't know if you can share some input on this on whether other towns have done this or used that sort of thing but it to me it almost makes sense to use that form based code almost as an infill guidance okay and i'm just curious if you have any thoughts or i actually haven't run into too many communities who have implemented form based code and how that's impacted their historic district i've always felt intuitively that it should go hand in hand mm -hmm. Right, if it's based on the existing structures and kind of, you know, that's how you determine what forms would go there. Um, so that's really interesting for me to hear that it sounds like you think it's it's working well. Well, I wouldn't say it's working well. <laughs> <laughs> it's so working I, on I, something. Yeah. Okay, it's <laughs> so, doing something. Yeah. It's active. So I, I, personally, I think the town did minimal with it. I think they could have done more and I think it became at odds with it, and I think that's part of the problems that have crept up, and we're realizing that now, and hopefully mm -hmm. we can maybe use, you know, I think using it as a guide tool would could be helpful, but I didn't know if it's been done before or not. That's why I was asking. Yeah, no, I'm not, um, I'm not sure who else even has form-based code yet. I'm kind of out of the, the planning world personally, um, and we often don't get a lot of overlap when I talk to historic district commissions about their zoning, even though you would think sometimes. Um, so I'm interested to hear, you know, how it's working for you guys. And if I hear from somebody else, another community, I'd be happy to put you guys in touch. Could be an added question on your um, annual report. Yeah, it would be great data to get for sure. Yeah. And then you'd get the aspect of all applicants who, or members of they would just, you know, check that you do you participate in form based codes and then you'd have at least a, an idea. Yeah, a data point would be great. Thank you. Yeah, because the, the town pretty much went with, you know, they had a um, consultant come in and look at the areas and they're pretty much only a couple blocks long, each of these areas. And they pretty much mimic, you know, mimicked what was already there. You know, if the houses were 30 foot back from the mm -hmm. road, they kind of wanted that same look, which our guidelines would say the same thing and then but they also put a height re uh, requirement on it and didn't do much else with it so it, it was very minimal I, th oh, you know, I think okay. they could have looked more at designs or appearance standards to it and, yeah you know and maybe they could blend well together or at least I think they could so I mean it, like I said intuitively it feels like they they should it, it seems to be yeah. very similar so I, I think it could work well hand in hand if we sat down and had this discussion and see if we can just use that because with this project recently that did make a lot of news you know initially we had some of us thinking one way some of us thinking another way and it would help keep us on one direction rather than our own board at odds potentially so yeah that's another reason i think it could be a good idea you know another resource um that i'm just thinking about is are you napc members michelle 
Okay. Um, so the okay okay um the napc the national alliance of preservation commissions is a nationwide organization i don't know how familiar you guys are with them um, but they have a lot of really great resources um, they do webinars all the time they do um, a biannual conference called forum they also hold uh, um, you can invite them to your community and they'll do what they call a camp um, which is commission assistance and mentorship program and that's a kind of really focused um, training session for your could be for your board your historic district commission or you know you could invite other boards things like that and they have a whole menu of topics you can choose from um, anyway but NAPC uh, also as part of their resources um, has a listserv that maybe even if it's not New Hampshire based there I'm sure there are communities around the country too that have done form based code and might have some information about how that works with their historic district too. Um, I know New, New Hampshire, you know, we have our kind of really specific way of doing things for sure, um, but just gathering information from other places, you know, might spark something as well. So that's another resource to look into. Um, that organization under the U.S. Parks? No, they're um, a nonprofit. Oh. Yep, yep. So um, you can get membership. It's based on the... Um, Population of your community, and it's pretty affordable. I believe Summersworth would probably be fifty dollars, maybe a hundred at the most. Um, and when you get that, um, it's for your organization. So if you purchase that membership, you send them all of your contact information, and then you all will get their notifications about webinars. You can sign up for them; they're covered generally under your membership. They're free. Um, sometimes they're paid, depending on how um, you know who they have to come to speak. But most of them are free. Um, so if that's, I don't know if you guys have a budget, but that's something to consider. <laughs> we were just discussing that. <laughs> okay. So the other thing to consider, um, I hope I'm not getting too off topic, but I do think this is important for you guys to, to be aware of them as a resource, um, is that you can apply to us as part of our annual grant program to pay for your membership. Um, and also to host a camp if you would like to have an APC come and have a hold a camp for you. Um, in per, an in-person camp is $7,000. Um, and if, if you apply for our grant program and we get that, we will pay that $7,000. And generally, you are matching that with your in-kind time, your attendance at the camp and the work that you know, Michelle might do to coordinate with them um, to, to get that all set up. So that is something to consider, and it might even be something, I don't know what the timeline is for your task force, but it might be an interesting, um, you know, step in exploring all of that as well. They do have a module on um, infill design and development that they can cover along with other things. I think I did sign up for us to get covered for the membership. Okay. Did so. we do the paperwork? Yeah, I did. Submit it. Okay. Yes. Did you buy it? I don't think I've bought it yet. Okay, so let's I'll... check that paper. Yeah, let's <laughs> check that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, it's, <laughs> I, I know it's a real, um, I, I mean, the memberships are so, like, the cost is so minuscule compared to the paperwork we have to do for to, to give you the money. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure the paperwork on your end. Um, but uh, but if that's the way that you can get it, then we're happy. We've, we've tried to... Um, we tried to make it easier by asking one community to be a host community for everybody where they would purchase a membership for every community and then the money would just go through them and it would be one contract um, but that hasn't really worked out so unfortunately we do have to do all that paperwork for your $50 membership <laughs> oh, a resolution I'm sorry was it a resolution that we had to do last time um, I don't remember it was just regular paper regular grant paperwork okay so yeah that should be good I mean, again, like fifty or hundred dollars based on your your uh, population. So, um, so the, but the next grant round um, will probably not be due until the middle of the summer. It really depends. Um, the federal government doesn't have a budget yet, so we don't have money to give out yet. Uh, so we're hoping to make applications due like middle of the summer, depending on how things go. So I will. I will keep Michelle apprised of that, and she's very on top of things. Um, 
for that so she'll know if you guys do want to apply for camp or some other type of, of project. Um, I do encourage you to go on NAPC's uh, website and look at um, look at what they offer. I think their whole menu of, of the modules that they have is on there as well. So you can see the topics they cover. And they can also do custom ones. Um, so the last one that uh, we held here in New Hampshire was in um, Lebanon mm -hmm. uh, last year, last spring. Um, and so they got to choose what they wanted to cover. So there was an attorney there to cover kind of the legalities of you know, ordinances and regulations. Um, there was a preservation planner there. He was the previous CLG coordinator down in Massachusetts, so he's got a ton of experience. Um, he did a really great module on, um, uh, you know, design guidelines and kind of working with the community, kind of PR kind of stuff. Um, so there's a bunch of topics that you can look at, too. So that was a very long-winded way to answer your question. I apologize, but I hope it was useful information. <laughs> I just got one more question. Uh, another topic that has come up, especially this recent large project, was um, one of the councils actually proposed shrinking the district some, and you know, obviously that could go either way. I, you know, for now it seems to be on hold, but this is all part of this um, advisory committee, I believe we're calling it, to look at that as well. Do you guys do anything with assistance on either enlarging, shrinking, or just recommendations in that realm of stuff? So um, we try not to give too many strong recommendations for local decisions. We want to support you all as, you know, knowledgeable preservation folks. Um, but at the same time, it can be really hard as a state agency to come in and kind of say, we think you should do this to a community. Um, that being said, uh, again, through the grant program, we could maybe help uh, pay for a consultant to do a survey of the district and make a recommendation for the boundaries based on, you know, all of the standard criteria that we use when we look at um, historic districts. Um, and that's that would be kind of a neutral, you know, uh, neutral kind of professional standard-based evaluation of it. That is one thing we did raise when those conversations were happening was because we are certified local government grant um, no, that we could apply for that grant. To yes, do that. Yep. So, you absolutely could. Yep. 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 Um, it would be, you know, I don't know what the timeline is for this task force or when people are looking to do anything. But again, <laughs> they, you know, they would be due sometime in the middle of the summer. So you likely wouldn't be looking at a product until, you know, next year, depending on how all of that, how long all of that takes. But it's not a bad thing to have anyway. I don't know how old your surveys are in the area, frankly, and it couldn't hurt to get them updated anyway. 2010, 11, 12, and 13. Oh, that's not bad, though. Never mind. But well, that was for <laughs> doing the whole district. The it was in phases. It took, it took four years to do all the whole district. Okay. Well, I mean, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I think district-wide we're talking back in the 80s. So that was just a few that. So no, no, no. We had two different surveys done. We had one done in, I believe, the 80s uh, to look at the district as a whole from a National Register nomination okay. criteria. The more recent one was done to look at it for our board to have information about, is this still contributing? Like, what is on the house? Each. Exactly. Oh, okay. So they were two different types okay. of surveys. Okay. Yep. Those, gives you two yeah, those give you two different mm -hmm. points of information. Correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right, our first survey was done in 1986. Yeah. So, I mean, it might be helpful to have a comprehensive like contextual survey rather than you know does each individual building you know you have you have do the parts make up the whole and now you know something like what what does the whole look like might not be a bad Correct. thing to consider um, all right <laughs> can I just ask one more question Sorry. Um, as far as holding a camp how many people usually attend I think uh, under that seven thousand dollar fee, it's thirty people. I feel like thirty sounds right. And you can have more. Um, it just costs whatever per person that they have a fee structure for that. But thirty people is a good amount. Yeah. Um, so in Lebanon, um, what they did was they secured however many people they knew from town were going to go, um, and then they opened it up to area and you know to other people. To, uh, to see if they were interested. They let us email our CLGs and let them know they were welcome to attend, um, uh, mostly staff people. Um, so if you don't think you'll fill up the 30, that's a great 
you know, opportunity to, if you want to invite, if you have neighboring towns or people that you, I don't know, talk to often um, in other areas, you're welcome to do that too. Or another historic districts potentially. Yeah. Yep. And there and, are other certified local governments, pretty local that would, might be interested. Yeah. And so that's my next question. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever did a joint camp with no, another community? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we would love if somebody would do that. Yes. Um, and or maybe host a statewide situation. We'd okay. love to work with you. Um, we really would like the opportunity for if communities are willing and able to step up and be hosts for larger events through our grant program, um, we would love to do that. We can't spend the money ourselves. Mm -hmm. It has to be a pass through to a CLG. But if a CLG applies for a grant to do a larger project that involves other CLGs, a larger camp, a statewide conference, something like that, that's something that we can fund. Now, that being said, as much as I would love to see that, if you all have priorities of your own, address those first, for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I think some of the surrounding communities have the same issues happening. So it might I be a good yeah. opportunity to invite them as well. Great. Yeah, and that could be in the form of a camp. It could be in the form of some kind of something else that you design. Um, I mean, I do think NAPC and their camp structure is a good starting point. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely at least look there. They may even be um, interested in designing something, you know, custom to seacoast issues or you know i mean because you are facing different development pressures than other areas of the state mm -hmm. i don't think our issues are unique they are not unique i would agree to that yes but i do think perhaps the pressure is a little higher than some other areas specifically for for development and you know versus just um like larger development versus individual home changes perhaps um, one question I did have, and it might not be too much on topic, um, as the SHPO, do you ever have um, preservation um, or planning um, people going through school who want to do their masters, uh, they're doing anything where like they want the experience of doing a national register nomination, where if you someone reaches out, you let the local communities know that this person is possibly willing to do this for the experience, not necessarily cost. Um, just curious if you ever have that happen. Um, I'm more used to that where the schools have more of that as a base, but I didn't know if we end up with, with that up. You know, I Hampshire. think there may have been more of that in the past. Um, a number of preservation programs in recent history have been um, either eliminated or kind of decimated. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we see as much of that. Yeah. All right. Too much hopeful. <laughs> I know, I know. And it's it's actually um, especially tough because even our consultant pool is shrinking. Um, prices are going up. People are busier. There's less people doing the work. It's, it's, it, ha it has been a, a, a bit tough. Yeah. Great. Just curious. Um, I mean, there are some programs, though, if you were to reach out to them directly and let them know you were interested, I'm sure somebody would at least get back to you. Right. Um, so... Is there anything else on yours before we I go? Do have, I, do have, I think we covered a lot of the topics, but let me just check. And I just have to say thank you to uh, New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, Brandy and Amy. Uh, they've been great support for planning staff throughout the years. So well, and we're lucky to work with them. And we did a grant. It was last year, right? Like my brain's not going too crazy where we had the, <coughs> the educational pr programs, the workshops. year before. Oh, was it the year before? Yeah. Okay. My time's already getting away. What do we have? Four sessions? Yeah. Yeah. They worked. It was very. Right. And we had the drone footage done. And the map. Oh. Good. Okay. That was one of the questions. I mean, I know the answer to that one, but <laughs> glad to hear that you guys enjoyed it as well. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, one of my questions was, you know, as far as issues, political, practical, financial, you know, that are that you know that you've been running into and in implementing your your work here. Um, yeah. I would say um, this board actually was 
and you guys tell me, you know, put your input in. Uh, we had some trials this year, but I was actually very, very surprised and very happy with how our town supported our board from the other board side. Um, so we did have an appeal to our decision, our, um, which goes to our zoning, right? I have that right. Um, and they upheld our decision. So it was very nice to see uh, us work together within the city. So I would say that, and now we have these task force coming about so that we're working together, which I think is very promising. Not to say there have been trials, but. One thing that I was actually impressed with over this course of this year was that on more than one occasion where a non-resident just with their ear to the grindstone kind of thing, paying attention, felt moved to come in support of this community's issues, not even from this community. So that was unique in my experience and mm. I've been with this a while. So we're not in the shadows. Interesting. So, yeah. Were they even like a, not even like a second homeowner or anything? No. Wow. Just somebody who really enjoys town. He, he's in the historic pre preservation. He's yep. not just, you know, someone who just thought he'd come and talk. So he has some experience and expertise and um, development background, but came in support of it. Great. As a non-resident. I mean, I think that speaks to you all as a board too. And you know, how strongly they felt you know, they could support your decision as being grounded in your ordinance and legalities and, you know, preservation principles, too. So that was a stand up moment for me. That's great to hear. How do you think, Richard, you kind of already touched on the other issues that yeah. we are still facing as this year comes in. But yeah, yeah. I can't think of much else yeah. more in your agenda. No, um, I mean, if there's anything else you all want to share with me, any other wins you were excited about or things you're nervous about or, you know, project ideas you might have questions about? The local plaque. Uh, so one thing, um, actually, we were doing at 6 o'clock tonight, a uh, workshop. We are working with our museum to put in a historic plaque program because um, it's been something we wanted to do. But as we just kind of talked about, we don't have a fund <laughs> or a budget. We have to go request that. So we're partnering with uh, that um, it's non for profit, and so hopefully, we're going to get that up and running this year. We're hoping That's to right. uh, placard historic homes with the year built and perhaps the particular first owner, if known, and through research from the museum and uh, through the programs that were close to being finalized from our committee meetings, that we can present something to council for some funding and, and be able to acknowledge these homes and structures with an appropriate small plaque that says the year they were built or about the year they were built and so that we worked on just prior to this meeting that's great that's really great from a document documentation perspective as well as you know just a education and community engagement perspective which is huge when it comes to you know making sure you have support of folks so it sounds like you guys are really doing the right things also in 2023 we added historic markers to our street signs oh which announced which we changed the the street sign that is everywhere else to a very historic looking very unique and designating it making it obvious that that street is within the historic district oh neat so the streets in just in the district have different signs okay not all of them yet but it's a process but yeah, yeah. it will that's awesome and I know it's always been at least a goal of mine, and I think a lot of you mimic that. I would love to see our district be listed on the National Register, but um, like to you understand that's an education, getting everybody you know informed of what that means, right? Mm -hmm. That it's not this big scary process, like that it does not come with more regulations, mm -hmm. um, and understanding like that a survey would be required, right? Mm -hmm. Like that nomination from the 80s we couldn't do anymore because a lot has changed. But again, that's a that's going to be a process to get there, but we're trying. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so we, when you leave here tonight, look at some of the street signs that lead up towards the hill, and they look different than all the others. Okay, I'll definitely check it out. That's great. I love I love the idea of people knowing they've entered something. You know, like they, they're somewhere different, yeah. somewhere special. That's great. I think that's pretty much what we're up against and looking forward to do and our shining hope <laughs> for this coming year but uh, anything we forgot no i'm good 
Well, thank you all for having me. Thank you for sharing with me. Um, and you have an amazing resource in Michelle, but if you have questions about potential projects or you know what you might want to do first or how you might want to juggle a couple of things, I'm happy to come back or answer emails you know, or whatever the case might be. Um, but it sounds like you guys really have a handle on things. We're trying, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're my first community of 2024, so I really appreciate a nice, uh, a nice easy ride. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> um, Amy actually has a request of you all. Uh, do you want to make that? Um, Sorry, thank you. Um, yes, I'm Amy Dixon. I'm the Community Preservation Coordinator with the Division of Historical Resources. Um, and we are also embarking on an update of our statewide preservation plan. Um, it was published in 2021. We're looking, it expires in 2025, but um, we're looking to do some community engagement. Um, and I wanted to start by asking if I circulate a um, piece of paper, would if you're willing to take an online questionnaire for us to get us kind of kicked off, um, if you could include your email addresses and I will email you the link to this questionnaire. It's about 10 questions just to kind of start getting the conversation rolling about preservation around the state. Um, I would be very appreciative of that. Yes, I think that. Okay, yeah. awesome, thanks. I do have a question though. Michelle has our whole board member email listing. Is that easier for her just to email it to you? If, if you're willing to share that with me, I just didn't, if anyone wanted to opt out, I wanted to give them that. that I feel choice. like if they want to opt out, they just don't they just take don't it. Okay. Oh, that would Fine. be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. If I, and I can follow up with Michelle directly and say, Hey, can you give me your counselors? Just that way you don't have to worry about, is that an L or is that an I, or is That's that, good. what is, what is that? Thank you. I appreciate handwriting. that. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Avoid the bounce backs. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Thank you guys so much. Yes. All right, thank you. thank you. All right, so Michelle, I know you will take care of that one for us. Um, all right, next on the agenda, we have a request from our new mayor uh, that he is putting together a housing task force and he would like us to appoint an HDC member to go. Um, I have had uh, one of our members uh, volunteer to do this. So I want to open it up to conversation. I will let you know Richard is very much in wanting to do this for our board. And I'm just curious. I want to open it up to the floor to discussion. And if anybody else is also interested in being on this. Um, I'll, I'll support Richard representing us. And if it wasn't for him, then I, I would have volunteered myself. But wonderful, wonderful choice. Thank you. Any other conversation or do, would we like to take a vote do we need a vote on this no okay no. great then i think richard consider yourself our nomination for that task force thank you very much all right thank you all right we'll move on to workshop business any workshop business that you would like to bring up and i'll put it to tim thank you madam chair yes tonight we did have a workshop on um historical placards to be placed potentially on historical homes we met at six o'clock, included at about 10 minutes to seven. Um, the discussion wrapped around um, material of the sign, which we've kind of agreed on that it'll be an AZAC material. We have a volunteer that is going to create, once the template is created, volunteer to create this sign um, as a sample. And then we're going to provide at the next meeting um, versions of how those letterings will look uh, and we also discuss potential financing potentials if to get some seed money to move to begin to launch this program as well as uh, how those funds will be handled so we get we get quite a lot I think accomplished tonight and hopefully we'll have something to present as more of this is what we're going to do, kind of, you know, hand it off, uh, probably within um, the month or two, I think we'll conclude. So that's where we stand. We're doing very well with that. All right. Thank you, Tim. All right. We'll move on to communication and miscellaneous. Any communication and miscellaneous from the board tonight? 
actually am pretty sparse myself. Um, I think we did have a couple of uh, new openings within the community. I believe, um, oh, I'm gonna forget the name now. Um, Jamaican opened. The Flame Restaurant. Thank you, The Flame <laughs> Restaurant. I'm sorry, my brain is just going. <laughs> Yes. No, sorry. Um, I also know that I there... I saw numbers, too. I'm like, who's she talking about? <laughs> uh, there's been also uh, talks that there is a new uh, restaurant going into uh, where Market Street was. Yes. Um, so everybody hopefully be out and about and starting to support these new local restaurants. What, and... What's the address of the on Market? Or not ever? 45 Market. Oh, yeah. yeah. The old yeah. bakery. Yep. Yes. It's a tortilla. Okay, good. That's great news. Yeah. Yep. So you just want to encourage, go support your local. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll throw this out to uh, I think it's Continental, the Chinese restaurant. They did some renovations this past year, um, and I've been hearing word on the street that it's awesome. So good for them too. They've been stepped up their game. So yeah, we've got some good things happening. Yeah. All right, that was all I had, Richard. In fact, to carry on in that conversation, when I was at one of these restaurants, I overheard somebody that had come up from Portsmouth, and they were remarking on how we have a variety of restaurants with different ethnicities. Mm. So See, I'm not the only tongue-tied yeah. one tonight. Uh, right, two, Tuesday, my wife and I yeah. ate at Anatola's, and it was fabulous. And, it was just, and they were saying that around Portsmouth, it just seems to be all the same American cuisine. Nothing, no variety is what they were basically saying. No variety in close proximity, yeah, right. Is, no. I agree. Yeah, we have a variety, so just maybe that's a good word for someone's worth. Hopefully we can build off of that, possibly. We're doing good. Very much agree. I love that we have multiple... Uh, restaurants for dinner, lunch. We have multiple restaurants for breakfast now. You know, I love to see the momentum keep going. So, yay. All right, that's all I had. Do we have any other communications or any motions? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.